Who gets to decide that you have that but you don't? Because you work in a bank and you work in a school. So screw you. You work at, you know, you work in government, but you, you decide to spend your life helping special needs kids have meaningful experience. So you don't get your cancer treatment, but that guy does. Barbaric. In those stark terms, <laughs> barbaric. I, um, I announced my uh, intention to stand for the NHA on Jonathan Ross because I am bloody showbiz. Um, <laughs> but it was way before I was ready to announce it, frankly. But it was, in terms of the opportunity I had, it was going to be the biggest platform. And that felt like that was more worth doing than anything else. So I announced it. And then I wrote a blog post. And the blog post headline was a deliberately hyperbolic phrase, which I believe has some underlying truth, but obviously not the actual active thing I was saying did I intend to be interpreted as being true. I realise that made a bit of a rod for the back of many of the wonderful, gorgeous, deeply intelligent people who have to deal with this performing monkey. <laughs> the, 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 if, if you don't know what it was, it was um, uh, David and Jeremy want your kids to die unless you're rich. <laughs> I do not believe. I'm glad you applaud it. You're applauding it because you're intelligent people and you realise the intention of that phrase versus the actual way that you could go, <laughs> which is my best Toby Young impression. Literally, I haven't spent a lot of time working on it. But, but, you know, clearly what I'm not saying there is that David Cameron and Jeremy Hunt wake up every morning and think, how can we kill the smaller ones? That is, that is not what I am saying. But I think that what we all understand is that at the point that healthcare is afforded according to wealth, not need, then it is only the children of the wealthy who will be able to survive illness be able to survive disease and injury. That is what I meant. That is what is at stake here. We are moving towards a system where it is only the moneyed few who will be able to receive health care. Um, <laughs> health care accorded by need, not wealth, must surely be the mark of a truly civilised society. Um, Bevin said, illness is neither an indulgence for which people have to pay, nor an offence for which they should be penalised, but a misfortune, the cost of which should be shared by the community. Especially in London, it is increasingly hard to feel that we are not part of a community because there are new people with new ideas, new ways of doing things, they want to be here because here is a better place to be than basically almost everywhere else in the world. Of course you want to be here. This is better. So that the notion that we have of community, if we're UKIP, involves, well, can you whistle the thing from Bullseye? <laughs> no? Well, then you are not part of my community. <laughs> we, we have a better way of being a more intelligent way, a smarter way, to recognise the shared humanity as community. Yeah. And at that point, Bevan's community, uh, in, in that phrase, becomes it should be shared by the community, it should be shared by all of us. The idea that we cannot afford the NHS is a lie. Yeah. It is a lie. <laughs> it is not that we can't afford it, it is that a privileged minority don't want us to have it so that they can have a new I say to them, to hell with you. <laughs> to hell with you. Bearing in mind I'm an atheist, that's a pretty hollow sentence. <laughs> you should demand an NHS, you should expect an NHS, and you should be prepared to fight for an NHS. <laughs> and bearing in mind that it's not a sentence I ever thought I would have to say. I've grown up with a generation, I think like most people in this room, where the NHS is just a thing, right? It's a thing that's there. You don't have to fight for a thing. It's like saying, hey, fight for air. 
fight for water. I never, what, the NHS? Just the NHS, right? It's only at this point you look around, you see what's happening. It is, a, it is far from a sort of invincible safety net. It's a political football. And the problem is that with any football, if you kick it long enough and hard enough, eventually it bursts and you can't put it back together again. This whole creeping privatisation, this privatisation by stuff, this running of it down to hive it off, we're basically moving to a point at which we can no longer um, fix it. We can no longer get it back. Once it's gone, it's gone. So we have to fight for it while we still have it. And, and the thing about that slow creep, that slow creep, the, the, the fact that it's being slowly removed from us, it made me think with all the World War One stuff, it reminded me very recently of being in school, learning about World War One and GCSEs. And I remember being a kid, sat there, looking at these history books, thinking, why? How? Hang on. All of these things were happening, and nobody went, wait, stop. St this is going to end in disaster. People are going to die. Stop. As a, as a child, I looked at those books, and I went, it was, it was understandable at the time what was going on. Why did nobody stop it? Yeah. What is going to happen when my grandchildren, there was a time when the people of this country had health care that was free at the point of need, not at the point of your ability to pay. I can imagine what it's going to look like when they read that. They'll be the same teenager in the same classroom thinking, why? Why did nobody do anything? Why did nobody speak up? Why did nobody fight? Well, this is a room full of people who will fight. This is a room full of people who want to spread the word. Because the moment that anybody finds out it's being taken away from us, what do they want to do? They want to fight. They know how important it is. They know that we have to keep hold of it. It's just a case of spreading the word. It's a case of cutting through the bullshit that is being fed to us on a daily basis about we can't afford it. Oh, it's immigrants. Immigrants. It's health tourism. It's, the, the, it's those people, it's poor people, it's people on benefits. No, it's not the people at the bottom, it's the people at the top. And they need to hear that we are not going to stand there. We are not going to take it anymore. We are going to fight because together we are invincible. I'd like to end with a quote from one of my favourite philosophers. His name is Alvy Simpson, you met him, he wears a little hat and a jumper. He asked my wife what we were doing today, she had to try and explain it to him. She had to explain to a six-year-old about the stealth privatisation of the National Health Service. But she just about got there. And my son, right bearing mind I'm talking about fighting for the NHS for future generations. My son said... I'm going to find the guy selling the NHS and kick him in the goonies. <laughs> Let's start kicking people in the goonies.